my grandfather tells a story about when he first went in the mines that he was either six or eight years old. But those days they worked 12, 14, and 16 hour days and he told me that his dad would have to carry him home from work. Now my dad didn't start in the mines until he was 14. Of course he was supposed to be 16 but nobody really checked your age. I quit school at 16 and went to work on the track repairing the tracks for the CNR and uh, I discovered that instead of making five dollars and sixty cents a day I could make nine and a quarter a day at the Red Deer Valley coal mine picking bone in the tipple. Eventually I went from working in the tipples to going underground. My first day underground I was scared spitless. It, uh, the claustrophobia set in and I thought, for heaven's sakes, I'll never find my way around in here. I'll be lost forever. The sounds, some of those were a little bit scary as you'd hear the roof shift and some of the old ties crack a bit. At that point, uh, according to my sister, my mother cried for a month uh, because of it was a rather dangerous job down there and she knew of the deaths and the injuries. Well, if you worked in this tipple in the, in the 50s, and that's when I was working in here, it was not uncommon for the temperature to drop to 40, 45 below and stay down there for several weeks. Now, you would freeze quite thoroughly in the, as you stood by your uh, shaker as the cold went by. So if we got a break in between loads, I would run down to the blacksmith shop and pick up some hot bricks, bring them back up, and then I would stand on those. The next break, you'd take those ones down and get some fresh, warm ones. Uh, and that's how we managed to survive, uh, keep from freezing our feet. You could be fired for smoking, and especially in the tipple. Uh, it's, because of the dust uh, that was prevalent and everything. So what we would do, uh, and I wasn't the only one, we would lean out the window and smoke a cigarette out there. Uh, one night the wind was blowing exceptionally hard and I leaned out the window to light my cigarette, but I couldn't keep a match going long enough to light that cigarette. So I said, I'll just light it inside and then go my head outside with the cigarette. Well, there was a terrific whoof because all the coal dust that was flying through the air ignited. There were three of those big whooshes. I put that cigarette out immediately and I spent the rest of the evening, and it was on the evening shift, running up and down the tipple looking for spot fires. Fortunately, there were none. That tipple did burn down three years later, but <laughs> and it possible it could have been somebody lighting a cigarette, I don't know. Uh, payday was wonderful. <laughs> you couldn't walk straight down the street, you had to walk sideways. There were people from one end of the street to the other, groups talking. There were a number of fist fights going on. If you didn't like the one at the Alexander, you went across the street to the White House and watched that one. It was a pretty wild town in Drummeller when the mines paid you. If you take a mine like the, uh, like the Atlas here, they would put out somewhere around 800, 850 tons of coal a day. And over the years, apparently, there was about 60 million tons of coal left this valley. If you lined up the boxcars it would take to haul that much coal, you could start in East Cooley and go all the way around the world and uh, maybe even have a few extra boxcars going past. <laughs>